Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig at six o'clock. It's time for a Magic Live. Now today, I'm gonna to be combining some cube magic with Bizarro's color changing sponge balls, which seems like a weird combination, and it is. But I really believe that when you buy a trick, you wanna try and put your own spin on it. You wanna create your own routine to do with that trick. And that's what I try to do with every single trick that I buy. And one of the ways that I try to do that is by taking two products or two objects or two props that have nothing in common with each other, and I try to mesh them together and see what you get. And this is something that that, that works really, really well. You'll see what I mean uh, by combining some basic, uh, 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 cube manipulation along with color changing sponge balls you get a really nice routine let me show you what i mean i've got sarah behind the camera she's going to help me hey sarah how you doing hey and i've also got a bag um inside the bag i'm going to tell you right now there's four balls that's going to be a prediction that we're going to get back to in a bit right. and as well as the uh the four balls i also have a rubik's cube now, you know that I'm pretty good with a Rubik's Cube. I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, right? Yeah. The thing is, whenever a magician brings a Rubik's Cube out, uh, even though there's a million things you can do with a Rubik's Cube, the audience expects you to solve it. So anybody who's watching this, uh, this, this video right now, this Magic Live, and wants me to solve a, magic, uh, wants me to solve a Rubik's Cube, there you go, one-handed, three seconds, that's for you guys. We're going to use this cube in a very, very interesting way. There's six colors on this cube, right? Yes. I'm going to turn my head and I want you to confirm because the camera can see my hands, they can't see my head. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm that I'm not looking at all? You're not looking at all. I'm going to do this. Anytime you want to, just say stop. We're going to stop on the colour. Okay, stop. There. Yeah. Okay, now it doesn't matter whether I see that colour. Okay, it's red. You happy with red? Is red good? Yes. Fantastic. Now we're going to get a different colour as well. Um, and this time, I don't want to see what the colour is. So the second time, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn my head. I want to look at the colour, but then take the cube off me and hide it somewhere, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna go up and down. Anytime you want to, just say stop. Okay, stop. There? Yeah. Is that a different color? Yes. Can you take that cube off me, please? Mm -hmm. There you go, I don't want, and can you confirm to everybody watching this that I'm not looking, I've turned away the entire time? Yes. So we have two colors. One is red, I know you're thinking of red, and you've got a second color that I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna show you the difference between a prediction and a magic trick. A prediction is all about knowing ahead of time what's going to happen. And inside this bag, I told you I had four balls. Do you remember that? Yes. And you could have picked any color. You picked red. Uh, the second time, you picked a completely different color, but you picked red. Yes. What's interesting is that I've got four uh, balls inside this bag. That's ball number one. That's ball number two. That's ball number three. And that's ball number four. And you can see that all four balls are red. There's nothing else in the bag. I actually predicted that your first color would be red. Is that pretty good? That's not too bad, right? I mean, it's not the most mind-blowing prediction in the world, but it's not too bad. But let's, let's see if we can go one step further, because the second colour I don't know, right? Yeah. So let's see if we can do some magic. You see, if I take that red ball and put it in my hand and snap my fingers, I can take that ball and make it go green. <laughs> yeah. Were you thinking of green? Maybe. Now let me see if I can do that again. You see, if I take this green one and wave it over this one, what happens is if I just wait a second, this one turns green as well. I can actually do that without putting it in my hand. You see, I can actually take that red one there, give it a shake and make it turn green, which leaves one final one. And if I do this, I can make that one turn green as well. And we're left with, uh, with this ball, which is, uh, which is green. We're left with the second ball, which is green. We're left with the third ball, uh, which is green, and we're left with the final ball here, which is green, which is a good trick, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you how it works. It's all in your imagination. You see, there never were any green balls. You saw green. I couldn't have known you thought of green. You thought of green, and because you saw green on the cube, it meant that you saw the balls as green, but they weren't green. And to prove that to you, I can take them out one last time, and you can see that each one of these balls has turned back to the color red, which is what they were when we started the trick. And that is, it's like a wild coin routine with sponge balls. And the nice thing is we're using the, uh, the cube as a way to force the color 
But then if you were building this into a longer routine, you could structure it so that you then go into some cube magic or you could take it in a completely different direction and do some other stuff with the ball. So my question to you is, are the two props that you own that you possibly couldn't think of combining? And if you did combine them, what could you achieve? You know, from a creativity point of view, have a think of that. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll be back again tomorrow at six o'clock. My name's Craig from Magic TV.